Good afternoon. Welcome to Sustainability in Action. I am Robert Liberty, the director of the Institute for Sustainable Solutions. The Institute for Sustainable Solutions, which you will hear referred to as ISS, was created over a decade ago to advance sustainability research and education here at Portland State University to help find solutions for the problems facing us as we make a transition to a more sustainable, just, and livable world. The sustainability research and education that ISS fosters and that is pervasive at PSU also reflects the motto that, uh, of our university, let knowledge serve the city. And the city I'm referring to is not just the city of Portland, although that is very close to us, literally and figuratively, uh, but the larger metropolitan area and all the cities in the world in our now urban planet. This event was organized to recognize our faculty, students, and other community partners that carry out the research and education partnerships with us. More importantly, and the reason we called it Sustainability in Action, is we are hosting this event to invite many of you who have not been familiar with us, who have not been engaged with us, to join us, to get to know our work, our community partners, and to help with that work in the coming year. We're also taking advantage of this event to welcome our new president of Portland State University, Ramat Shureshi. Uh, you'll get acquainted with him. He'll be the final presenter of our program. Over the last 10 years, ISS and Portland State University have been the welcome beneficiaries of a gift of $25 million from the James F. and Marion L. Miller Foundation. That was the largest gift at the time in the history of the university. And I want you to join me, and I, I'm going to ask uh, John to get ready for this. We're going to practice once, then I want you to say, thank you, Miller Foundation. Because it's one thing to get a nice letter from me, it's another to see you in this room, engaged in this work, and expressing your support for that remarkable gift. So we're going to rehearse. Are you ready? It'll be one, two, three, thank you, Miller Foundation. One, two, three. Thank you, Miller Foundation. All right, that was about a $12 million thank you. And instead of doing it twice, I just want you to express that support a little more, that thanks a little more vividly. Are you ready? John, are we ready? One, two, three. Thank you, Foundation. They will like that very much. Thank you. And while I'm on the subject of thanks, let me thank the organizers of this event, which was a demanding project, partly because they had to work with me, of course. And I want to identify Tanya Hood. Are you in the back, Tanya? Laura Gleim, Fletcher Bedoin. Thank them. Thank also all of my colleagues at ISS who have worked with all of you. If you would raise your hands to be acknowledged, please. Give them a round of applause. And of course, our wonderful music, performed by Mike Smith, who is a graduate of Portland State University, and John and Phil are handi handling audiovisual and our servers, so thank them as well. <laughs> We're using this program today to illustrate the work we do, to provide you with a sample of it. There's no way we could cover it all, so these are really illustrations by way of a sampler, not a summary of our activities. If you want to know about our work, of course, you can go to the website, you can talk to other people here, and we have tables around the room that I'll be referring to later in these remarks. First, we're going to discuss uh, contributions to enhancing the education of PSU students. The Institute for Sustainable Solutions supports the educational experience of students in many different ways. There are scholarships to the Honors College, paid internships, travel grants, funding for graduate research assistantships, professional development programs, contributions to sustainability curriculum like the certificates on food systems and energy, organizing continuing uh, course projects, capstones, and research support. And <clears throat> I think the scale of this is evident from this slide. Last year, we distributed half a million dollars in funds to students. There were 274 sustainability-related events. And enrollment in sustainability courses was 11,555. We also helped launch the Student Sustainability Center. And they have a table at the back of the room 
Uh, and it's been a successful program, and it's now been adopted by the Student uh, Activities Leadership Program uh, and supported through, supported through student fees. So please visit their table. We also have a student fellows program, and many of the uh, forms of assistance we provide come through the student fellows. There are more than 300 student fellows uh, this year, and we expect more to join them. And there are real benefits. Uh, we have a surprisingly high retention rate for ISS student fellows, a graduation rate of 87%, and I'm pleased to say that the participants in ISS Student Fellows Program broadly represent the kind of students at PSU. About a third of them, this is the first member of their family to go to college. And they generally represent the diversity in race, ethnicity, and national background that is one of the prides of our campus. So we are proud of that, although we can always do more. Now, to illustrate uh, the kind of experience students have working with us, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Sachi Arakawa. Why don't you come up to the stage, Sachi? <laughs> Sachi is a graduate uh, student in PSU's Master of Urban and Regional Planning with an emphasis on environmental planning and community development. She's also a graduate assistant at PSU's Institute for Metropolitan Studies and a very talented person, as you were about to see. Thank you, Sachi. Hi, I'm Sachi. Um, I am a student here at PSU. I'm studying environmental planning. And in my program, we talk a lot about environmental justice. And last year, I started thinking about um, something kind of specific. I was thinking about how things like identity and power and agency can actually inform how uh, marginalized communities view uh, trees and green space in their neighborhoods. And so this is something, it was something that I had kind of been uh, exploring here in Portland, but I felt like to really get at the heart of the issue, I had to go to other cities in the US and see how this was happening on the ground there. And so I wanted to design a research project for myself to explore this topic. Um, but in order to do that, I had to travel. And as a starving student, um, I can barely afford to travel across the city to get to campus every day without financial help. Um, but I, as Robert mentioned, I am a ISS student fellow. And so I found out that through the student fellows program, you can actually get funding to do these types of research trips. So I applied, and there was a whole process where I had to show them my research design and talk about my project. But I was ultimately accepted and I got funding, so I was able to go on this great research trip. Uh, and I went, I actually rode the train. I rode Amtrak all the way from Portland through the Rocky Mountains and Montana to the Midwest and ultimately to the East Coast. And I visited five different cities and did interviews and research in all these cities. So it was really cool, it was really eye-opening. And to be honest, I could probably talk about it for the next hour, but we do have other speakers. So I will um, just direct you to my blog that I kept if you're interested in um, finding out more about the trip that I went on. Um, I have some photos on there. I have some of my interviews that I uh, conducted and uh, just some information about my research. So that's uh, trainsandtrees.wordpress.com. Uh, but let's, let's bring it back to Portland, back to PSU. Uh, I'm just curious, how many of you all are new transplants to Portland within the last couple years? Anyone? Don't be shy. People are like, eh. Um, cool. Well, welcome. Um, I've been here over 10 years, but I suspect that maybe what brought me to Portland is also what drew you to this city, which is the city's focus on sustainability. Um, and that's also something that brought me to my program at Portland State and what continues to inspire me here on campus. Um, but of course, Let's, let's just get real for a second. Let's talk about the term sustainability, right? Like, it's, it's kind of become overused, maybe even misused in a lot of ways. Some people might say greenwashed. And I would agree with that critique in a lot of ways. But I think that Portland State and the Institute for Sustainability have really uh, continued to ex exemplify kind of the original principles of sustainability. And for those of you who aren't super familiar with sustainability theory, uh, when we talk about sustainability, we often talk about these three pillars, right? So this is social health, environmental health, and uh, economic health. And 
Uh, the work that the Institute for Sustainability does kind of exists um, or touches on a lot of these or all three of these pillars and kind of exists at the confluence or the overlap in the Venn diagram, if you will, of these three things. And so that was why I was really interested in working with them when I came to PSU last year. And so I had been looking through the Student Fellows Program at internships um, with the Institute, and I found a great program that I felt like embodied all three of these pillars of sustainability. And the project that I ended up working on is called uh, the Small Backyard Homes Initiative. And the Small Backyard Homes Initiative's goal is to make it easier and more affordable for people to build an accessory dwelling unit on their property. Okay, what does that have to do with sustainability? Um, well, I'll tell you, um, but I will first just define what accessory dwelling unit means for those of you who don't know. Uh, so an accessory dwelling unit is a small self-contained home that's built on the same property as an existing single family home. So this could be anything from like a basement conversion, so a basement that's been built into a separate living quarter, an attic conversion, or even a detached unit, so basically a small house in the backyard of an existing home. Um, and this type of housing has actually been increasingly seen as beneficial to cities. In fact, in the city of Portland, um, as part of our climate action plan, we made one of our goals to increase ADU development in the city. Uh, and so because of this, um, well, or the reason why people want to increase ADU development is because they have a whole variety of benefits. Um, everything from the potential to increase affordable housing options in neighborhoods that are, have become too expensive, um, to, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, creating extra income um, for working class homeowners in Portland if they want to rent out their unit, um, or helping elderly folks and retirees to age in place, so to stay in their home as they get older. Um, but perhaps most related to um, the environmental sustainability piece is that uh, accessory dwelling units are considered much more resource efficient than a normal traditional single family home. So they take less materials to build, they often um, use less energy because they're smaller, um, and uh, so they're considered more environmentally friendly as well. And so because of this, um, our project at ISS wants to make financing, permitting, and building accessory dwelling units more accessible for Portland homeowners. <clears throat> and so for my part, I crunch numbers and I make maps using GIS. Um, and these are some of the maps that I made within the last year. Um, I've done everything from site suitability analyses to looking at market force variables and their potential impact um, on ADU development in the city. And I've gotten to share my work with a whole variety of stakeholders um, from both public and private sectors, including, including um, City Commissioner Chloe Daly's office and the Portland Housing Bureau. <laughs> Um, so it's been really cool to, to meet all these people outside of school, outside of campus. Um, and I guess while I'm taking the time to brag, I might as well also mention that our project was in the paper not once but twice last year. Um, so it was a really cool way for me to kind of share my work um, and have it seen by the outside world. Um, so. Yeah, so my experience at ISS, you know, has taken me across the country on a research trip, uh, but it's also really helped to develop my professional skills here at home. And I think, as Robert mentioned, this kind of experiential learning model that the Institute for Sustainability has is really valuable for students, and it not only benefits us at PSU as a university, but also really has benefits for the whole community and for Portland as a whole. Um, and sustainability is what brought me to this school and to my program and what continues to really um, drive me to do my work here. So um, I encourage all of you who are interested in sustainability to uh, look into the ISS Student Fellows Program um, and to engage with some of the great speakers who are going to talk about their sustainability work that they're doing here at PSU. So thank you. We believe in practicing what we preach, and so our campus is a display of expertise of uh, on campus and commitments to sustainability principles. To tell us more about um, 
our leadership in creating and operating a sustainable urban university is Jenny McNamara. Come on up, Jenny, who's the director of PSU's Campus Sustainability Office. Jenny's office fosters partnerships across departments and disciplines that support institutional stewardship of our, line, of our environment by aligning the university's facilities, its operations, policies, and planning with PSU's conservation and sustainability goals. Uh, 18 months ago, <clears throat> the university president directed ISS to focus on climate change. And um, that is something that Jenny's office has been working on for some time and really distinguishes this uh, campus and this university from others around the country. Please welcome Jenny McNamara. I'm super happy to be here with all of you today because I know you're working on positive changes at the campus level, the national level, the international level in some cases. And all that work is really important because I think as most of us know, um, we live in a time where from energy security to public health, um, most of society's challenges stem from the natural world. Climate change, rapid and widespread species extinction, water shortages and more present a huge and seemingly insurmountable challenge for us. In many ways, our future depends on the vital role of universities to ensure that every generation is increasingly prepared for these modern challenges. Universities have a unique obligation to innovate solutions, make informed decisions that conserve natural resources, ensure economic stability, and nourish healthy and meaningful livelihoods. The upshot is that universities are also uniquely qualified to address this challenge. And PSU is doing just that. So before you leave today, there's five things, at least five things, that I'd like you to know about our green campus. The first is that we're national leaders. This is an area of excellence for us. PSU is widely recognized and has received numerous awards for sustainability policies, performance, performance and practices, including high rankings um, from US News and World Report, the Association for the Advancement for Sustainability in Higher Ed, Sierra Club, Princeton Review, and more. We build green, but we also operate sustainably. Like the rest of Portland, our campus is growing. We're building new space and expanding current ones, and throughout it all, we're committing to me committed to meeting strict sustainability standards in construction. We now have nine highly efficient LEED certified buildings on campus and three more in the works. Two of those buildings are platinum, the highest level of LEED certification out there. And the recently opened Carl Miller Center is on track for platinum certification too. This stunning building features a new addition that's passively cooled, maintains temperatures through natural ventilation. It's, sustainably, it's got sustainability har sustainably harvested wood, multiple eco-roofs, ample access to natural daylight and views, and even an art installation that uses reclaimed wood and honors old growth trees in the region. But not only do we design and build green buildings, we also operate them with sustainability in mind. Most recently, we embarked on an effort to certify a cluster of campus buildings through the Leeds op LEED Operation and Maintenance Program. And given our diverse building stock on campus, this enables us to optimize environmental performance in not existing buildings, not just new construction. Sustainability doesn't stop with buildings, though. We also value our urban ecosystem and healthy public spaces. Last year, we drafted PSU's first open space plan, which establishes a framework for campus planning and acknowledges the role of natural areas, courtyards, plazas, and corridors in creating a more sustainable and vibrant campus community. Take a walk around. You'll see bees buzzing in our courtyards and community orchard, dragonflies in the oak savanna, and plenty of 100-year-old trees. And our landscape is salmon safe certified. This means we've passed rigorous standards that commit us to minimi minimizing pesticide use, maximizing native plants, and implementing stormwater management practices that pr protect marine life just down the river. And just think, we have all of this in the middle of downtown Portland. We also choose alternatives. This is big for us. Over 70% of students and employees get to campus using alternative transportation. That means public transit, biking, walking, carpooling, and that's because we've prioritized smart commuting both through programming and design. Our campus planners have worked with city agencies and TriMet to bring three max lines, two streetcar routes, and more than a dozen bus lines to campus, making us, making Urban Plaza one of the busiest transit hubs in the entire state. 
we're consistently ranked in the top five bike-friendly campuses in the nation. We've got ample bike storage, bike rentals, and even we're even a super hub for Bike Town. Portland's new bike share program is awesome. I highly recommend checking it out. We also offer commuter support through programs like the Bike Hub, our on-campus bike co-op. It's an invaluable resource to our community for sure. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, we are confronting climate change. We're signatories of the National Climate Leadership Commitments, committing us not only to carbon neutrality, but also adaptive planning to ensure that our, we have an ability to thrive despite changing conditions. And our faculty, students, and staff are dedicated to confronting climate change right here on campus. We have a climate action plan committing us to net zero emissions by 2040. We're still a long ways from that goal, but we're working towards it every day in the decisions we make about our buildings, transportation, purchases, waste, and even what we're researching and teaching in our classrooms. And this is my favorite program to talk about. Our Living Lab program pairs academic innovations with staff expertise and student enthusiasm to pioneer solutions to some of our greatest challenges right here at home. Most recently, engineering students designed an energy efficient cooling system for a problematic biology lab on campus. Their impressive work is now being implemented and it's being funded through PSU's Green Revolving Fund. This fund invest energy, invests in energy efficiency projects that save money, reduce carbon emissions, and allow us to reinvest those savings into other sustainability projects. Those students should feel extremely proud. They're leaving a measurable improvement to campus that will long outlast their time here. And so all of this just goes to show that you can literally see our commitment to sustainability across campus. It's everywhere, in our buildings, our classrooms, our landscapes, and in our culture. That being said, the challenges loom large. And it's becoming clear that we'll have to be bold in order to change the tide. So before I leave today, I ask you to envision a future where our aspirations become a reality. I ask you to consider, what if? What if every decision we made was seen as an opportunity to improve upon the last, to go further, to lead? and rarely follow? What if we shifted our focus from energy efficiency to pooling our resources to actually generate clean, renewable energy on a scale large enough to serve not only our needs but those of our surrounding community as well? What if 100% of our wastewater was treated right here and reused on site using only plants and microorganisms? What if every incoming freshman got a bike? What if every building was so healthy, so full of natural light and clean air, and so inspired by nature that it left us feeling renewed and connected, and in the space in and of itself just increased productivity and nourished our ability to learn? We can't do it alone, though, that's for sure. <laughs> that kind of future isn't possible without partnership. We'll need to leverage our common understanding and shared values on and off campus to work together, to innovate together, to lead together. So perhaps that's the real challenge here. Finding commonality, considering diverse perspectives, and progressing towards a healthier existence together. Looking around the room today, I feel pretty confident we'll get there. With that, I hope you'll enjoy discovering all the things that make our campus unique and ultimately more sustainable. Thanks. I talked about our community partners, and by community partners, I refer to partners in business, in government, in nonprofit organizations, and community groups of all types. <clears throat> and it takes these partners in order for our work to be focused in a way that generates useful results and that those ideas are transmitted and placed into action. Our staff is at the core of this partnership work because they're the ones that create, broker, manage, and maintain those relationships, work that's often beyond the ability of busy faculty members to uh, sustain. In 2016-17, PSU uh, maintained 96 different sustainability-related community partnerships across a very broad spectrum. And I'm gonna use this one project that Sachi talked about as an illustration. This is just a partial list of those involved in the accessory dwelling unit, the Small Backyard Homes Project. So it's everyone from affordable housing advocates uh, to banks to designers to community groups. 
That's the illustration of the breadth and depth of partnerships we have. We decided that one of the best persons to talk about our partnerships was um, one of our funding partners, the Bullet Foundation. And this is a video from Dennis Hayes. I'm Dennis Hayes, president of the Bullet Foundation up in Seattle. I am an environmental lifer stretching back even before my days as the principal national organizer of the first Earth Day back in 1970. Over those decades, I've had lots of opportunities to see how colleges and universities address sustainability issues, and PSU's leadership has been, and is, extraordinary. Over the course of the last decade, Bullitt has made many grants to Portland State University and to its Institute for Sustainable Solutions, and we've been making those grants principally for two reasons. First, because of PSU's well-deserved national reputation for leadership and applied sustainability research and implementation. And second, because of PSU's truly remarkable record in forging multidisciplinary task forces to work effectively together. Indeed, PSU takes the whole concept of multidisciplinary to a brand new level. We have worked with teams with faculty from engineering, business, biology, geography, geology, chemistry, economics, urban studies, environmental science, community health, sociology, and anthropology. I mean, I've never seen anybody that puts together a team like that. There are bigger and richer universities in the Northwest, but there is no university in the nation with a deeper commitment to sustainable cities or with a more impressive track record than PSU. You've been remarkably effective in creating partnerships between your faculty and all the various bureaus in the city of Portland. Bullet is currently funding the Institute for Sustainable Solutions to coordinate much more closely with its peers uh, throughout the Emerald Corridor, that remarkable swath of land that runs from Portland, Oregon, on up through Vancouver, British Columbia. Such work is needed today more than ever as our region is ravaged by forest fires, our nation is buffeted by hurricanes and floods, and the world grapples with the mounting challenges posed by climate change. Confronting our deeply troubled planet with resolute hope and determination, we at Bullet are honored to have Portland State University and, and indeed all of you that are gathered there today as our partners. Thank you for everything that you do. And I want to acknowledge Steve Whitney, a senior program officer from the Bullet Foundation, is over here. Please thank him. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, we want to talk about the faculty's role in sustainability research and education. And I want to acknowledge that while ISS helps across the spectrum of disciplines, and for many years, we certainly don't encompass all the work in sustainability done by all the faculty here. There are over 210 faculty members teaching sustainability courses, and I have no idea how many papers are published on the subject every year. ISS has used its funds strategically to attract new talent. Faculty talent to PSU in subjects and disciplines as varied as chemistry, civil engineering, public policy, urban planning, and economics. We have provided grants to support faculty research, either directly or to helping to fund and coordinate other um, research and grant writing. In the last two years, research grants and grants to assist with grant applications have been awarded in anthropology, business, chemistry, economics, geography, environmental science, material science, sociology, urban planning, and other fields. In the prior academic year, ISS, as I mentioned, has emphasized research related to understanding and meeting the challenges of climate change. And I want to acknowledge our research director in this effort, Dr. Vivek Shandis. Uh, he is internationally recognized expert in urban heat island effect. He's lectured on this subject all over the world. And we would not be able to cooperate, collaborate, and bring together faculty members and partners without his help. Please thank him. I know he's here. We are proud of the 130 PSU faculty members who are ISS faculty fellows, and you can be grateful that I'm not going to read the names of all those disciplines. <laughs> so we have someone here to represent that work, and that's Dr. Amy Lubitow. If she would come to the stage, please. 
Dr. Lubatow exemplifies the power and potential of connecting university research with the needs of community groups and government agencies to develop practical solutions for a more equitable, livable, and sustainable city. She's an associate professor of sociology and a faculty fellow with us. She teaches courses in social sustainability, environmental sociology. Her research explores issues of mobility, public transit, and cycling in the United States. Amy. So first off, um, I, I want to echo some of the sentiments from previous speakers about the fact that here, well, here it is this. Um, sustainability equals people, places, and things. And so to some extent, um, I think that what we are talking about oftentimes is this notion of the things, the stuff that make up sustainability. And so obviously this is something that PSU has excelled at for a very long time. Um, LEED certified buildings, green buildings, um, the amazing things that we have really been pioneers at that Jenny highlighted. Um, we know we're, we're excelling when it comes to public transportation on and around campus. Um, but what I'm really passionate about explaining to people is that sustainability is so much more more than that. It is the things and the stuff and the you know new technologies and the, and the more efficient ways to do things, but it's also about all the people and places that fall alongside those things. And so I'm very interested in uh, talking to people all along these systems. So I'm going to talk a little bit today, I think, about the people and the places. Um, what I've been doing since I moved to Portland seven years ago is really going out and talking to people in neighborhoods. Uh, ISS has been supporting research that I do where I go out and I ask people all about what makes it hard for them to get where they need to go, what presents challenges when it comes to infrastructure, and how might we encourage people who are living outside of the central city to really engage in more sustainable solutions like biking and public transit and you know getting out and walking, all the things that we would talk about as active transportation. So uh, for the past few years, um, ISS has been supporting me in some partnerships with the Bureau of Planning and S Sustainability a City Office. So the first study I did was in 2015. Uh, and this study was really talking to folks in East Portland and North and Northeast Portland about barriers to active transportation. We were really interested, and the city was very interested in understanding what makes it hard for people to get from the outer parts of the city into the central city? Are there ways we can encourage people? Are there ways we can inspire people? How do we meet them where they're at so we can make more sustainable solutions? Uh, so that took me into many different neighborhoods around the city. Uh, I went to public libraries. I met with community organizations. And I talked to all kinds of residents across our city, some of the most vulnerable folks uh, who are here in Portland. And what I heard from folks there is that they have plenty of ideas about how they would like to access more sustainable, safe, and accessible pedestrian and bicycling infrastructure, but that many of them didn't have ideas about how they were supposed to communicate that to people in a position to make those changes. So ISS is excelling at bringing folks like me into neighborhoods and amplifying that voice, um, allowing community representatives and residents to talk to folks like me, and allowing me then to go back and present some of those ideas to the city. So since 2015, um, this is uh, some of the research that we did involved participatory mapping. Um, this is in the Cully neighborhood where we uh, did some focus groups in different languages, and we asked people where they go, where don't they go. Um, but this summer, uh, I have had the chance to, at the you know, request, I think, the inspiration from ISS, really, uh, to go out and dig a little deeper, specifically into one neighborhood, and that's the Lentz neighborhood. Um, so uh, this summer, I've been out with a number of students, graduate students. Um, this is an, one of my undergraduate students. Um, this is, uh, in the sunglasses, one of our community partners who's a graduate of PSU from the MERP program. Um, so we have been working uh, in the Lentz neighborhood to try and ask people about this concept called the Green Ring. It's a three, it's a proposed three mile biking and pedestrian loop. And we've been out talking to dozens and dozens of folks uh, on a regular basis all summer trying to understand what would it mean to you if you could walk around your neighborhood. It doesn't matter that you're not connected to the central city in the most obvious ways, but what would it mean if you could walk to the grocery store? What would it be like for you to be able to um, bike to the playground? So talking to folks like that has been a really collaborative effort uh, throughout the summer. We've done all kinds of things. Uh, the biggest thing we've been doing this summer is doing walking tours. We, we walk with people all around their neighborhoods. We ask them what they like, what they don't like, what would they like to see in the future. Uh, and so in this instance, again, ISS is uh, doing something very unique by centering people and places in this dynamic of sustainability, by focusing on what is it that people need, what's making it harder for them to in, you know, think of or adapt to a sustainable environment. And I think what, what I would, oh, this is a walk from last weekend, 
mind. Um, what, what I think we, we have a challenge in doing here at PSU is that we know very well how to solve some of these problems uh, when it comes to buildings, when it comes to the, the, the stuff and the things. And we're still kind of figuring out these pieces of how do we make those things and those opportunities and those forms of sustainability accessible to everybody, even folks who are the most disadvantaged, people who are living outside of the central city, people who are new to the city or new immigrants. Um, we're really, really, um, I think, trying to figure out the solutions to those kinds of questions here at PSU. And I think ISS has been essential in, in allowing me to develop those relationships with community partners and to then bring those community partnerships into conversations with the city in ways we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. I think one of the biggest challenges is that the city sometimes doesn't know where to start. And so I think we, uh, we fill this essential role here in, in really having the expertise and the knowledge to bring the, all of these groups together. Um, so I would leave uh, with saying that I have had countless student and faculty collaborations because of ISS, uh, and I certainly hope to continue those in the future. I think we have uh, an excellent uh, track record of interdisciplinarity. Most of my students do not come from the sociology department. They're from environmental science. They're from urban studies. They're from geography. Uh, so I think we're, we're really um, doing something very unique and different here, and, and I really hope that that continues. Thanks. We are very fortunate that PSU has friends in high places, friends in high places in government who care a lot about uh, this institution's and our community support for sustainability. I can't mention all those political leaders, but I'm going to mention a few. Uh, Mayor Wheeler of Portland, Congressman Earl Blumenauer, who represents PSU in Congress and who began his career as an aide to PSU President Joe Blumel. Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici, whose district is, just starts at the hills there, Oregon senior U.S. Senator Ron Wyden, and Oregon's junior Senator Jeff Merkley. Uh, Jeff Merkley grew up in East Portland in a working class neighborhood uh, and really understands this community and what PSU can contribute. He's rather busy in Washington, so he's sending this video message. Greetings, I'm Senator Jeff Merkley and I'm delighted to help kick off a new school year for the Institute for Sustainable Solutions and for the entire Portland State University campus. A special welcome to your new president, Dr. Ramat Shureshi. I know, Dr. Shureshi, that you will do a tremendous job carrying the university's tradition of academic excellence and its commitment to improving the quality of life for all of Oregonians through sustainability. It's a commitment that the Institute for Sustainable Solutions has proudly carried, working with different members of Oregon community to help create equitable, livable, sustainable cities and regions. It has done it through programs and initiatives like the Sustainable Neighborhoods Initiative, the Urban Sustainability Accelerator, the Living Lab Program, and more. Our state, our country, our world needs these kinds of initiatives, and they need the kind of leadership that the Institute has regularly demonstrated now more than ever. We all know the dangers posed by climate disruption we can see its impacts on the world all around us, shrinking ice sheets, melting permafrost, disappearing glaciers, more powerful storms, longer wildfire seasons, acidifying oceans, warmer winters that are great for pine beetles and terrible for trees, migrating insect and animal populations. Carbon pollution and climate disruption are the biggest test human civilization has ever faced on our planet. And right now, we are failing that test. We must act worldwide with great urgency. It's said that we are the first generation to experience the effects of climate change and the last to be able to do something about it. I know that PSU's Institute for Sustainable Solutions is working hard to do something about it. And in the United States Senate, I'm working hard on this challenge as well. In November 2015, I introduced the Keeping the Ground Act to end new fossil fuel leases on our federal lands and waters. And earlier this year, I introduced the 100 by 50 Act, a bold plan mapping out a path to transition our country to a 100% clean and renewable energy economy by the year 2050. This is a monumental undertaking. It's an aspirational moonshot, but it's one that we can achieve as a nation if we commit ourselves to it. And we can do so in partnership with the other nations of the world, committing themselves to it. And we need to be in partnership with them and helping to lead this effort. So I wish you all a great year. I know that all of you at Portland State University, and especially those of you at the Institute for Sustainable Solutions, 
are extraordinary partners in this effort to move our nation towards a 100% clean, renewable, and sustainable future. Henry David Thoreau once said, what use is a house if you haven't got a tolerable planet to put it on? You are on the front line in the fight for a tolerable planet. Thank you, and I look forward to continuing to work with you in the months and years ahead. To conclude our program, we will hear from PSU's new president, Dr. Ramat Shureshi. He has a long and distinguished career in academe as a mechanical engineer, author of many, many papers, and the holder of many patents. Most recently, he was provost and then acting president of the New York Institute of Technology. He's only been on the job for six weeks, but he's already adapted himself to Portland's sustainability ethos by getting on a bicycle, and participating in the Policymakers Ride, uh, organized in part by ISS community partner Green Lentz. Uh, we looked in vain for a photo of him on the bike, and I think uh, Dr. Shreshi has one, but we weren't able to share it with you. Um, but um, he may tell you a little bit more about that ride. All I can say is I don't think I would have finished it myself. Please welcome Dr. Ramat Shreshi. Thank you. Thank you. It's truly a pleasure and uh, it's my honor to be here with you today, uh, especially this distinguished group of individuals that they care about uh, our future, the future of our planet, and sustainability. As Robert mentioned, uh, to be exact, tonight is the anniversary of six weeks that my wife and I landed in the land of Portland. <laughs> and uh, as uh, you may recall, uh, when we landed at, uh, at the airport, there were probably a million people at the airport, and I was wondering, what is going on? I don't think these are all here to welcome my wife and I. I can tell you, you could not find a single car to rent. And then I realized that, no, they are here to watch the eclipse. <laughs> so what I can take a credit for, it's easy to take credit, really, is that with our arrival, we really helped the economy of Portland. <laughs> I. Uh, had the opportunity over the last six weeks to really get to learn about PSU and Portland. And as Robert said, uh, I did have the opportunity of doing a 12 and a half mile bike ride. Uh, so I passed my second test of being a Portlander after having my uh, fair, passing the first test, which was having a hoodie. <laughs> but uh, I have to say, it is such a pleasure to be here. Uh, we really have enjoyed being part of this community. And uh, as somebody uh, told me this morning, I had a breakfast meeting, and he said, Ramat, Enjoy the Portlanders' kindness and niceness. And that is true. You, especially for somebody like me coming from New York, you can see the contrast between those. So we appreciate that. What I have been impressed by is the extent of research effort that our faculty, students, and of course, our key partner, the city of Portland, are doing in the area of sustainability. Just uh, you know, about half an hour ago, I had the chance to go around uh, the tables and look at uh, what different parts of uh, the institute uh, is doing and the programs that the institute has initiated. It is great, and it's really points of pride. Uh, as you, some of you may also have taken advantage of, uh, you know, what is special about today. 
it is the park party day. If you did not, I don't know if they may be still out there, but uh, as I was going through all of the uh, tables and tents of all of our students, I really was surprised by seeing so many of them focusing on sustainability, whether directly or indirectly, which again talks about how important is this whole area to PSU and to the city of Portland. And it's really an honor for me to lead this institution. For me, uh, research is very important. I have said it, that research strengthens the quality of education and instruction in any classroom. And so I'm pleased to see so many uh, research activities across the campus. I was pleased uh, to participate roughly about two and a half weeks ago at a similar celebration uh, by the Transportation Center, which they also have a great deal of activities related to sustainability. What is special about that center that I really want to congratulate uh, Professor Jennifer Dill as well as all of the research team in that center is that it's a very competitive center. And for us, meaning PSU, to receive another five-year renewal of support from federal government for that center when UC Berkeley and University of Minnesota lost their center. That says a lot about the quality of research at PSU, and that's why I'm proud of them. Uh, there are only five of such federal transportation centers funded around the country, and we are the holder of one of them on the West Coast. Uh, I can talk about many activities across the campus in terms of research and a scholarship, especially those that have focused on sustainability. But let me just mention a few of them. The Center for uh, Public Interest Design. This is the center that led a project that resulted in a student helping designing 14 sleeping pods for homeless women in North Portland. The Northwest Economic Research Center, which is led by former Oregon State economist, Dr. Thomas Puwatsky. The Center for Life in Extreme Environments, where more than 80 researchers are combining forces to study the origins and boundaries of life. The Institute for Portland Metropolitan Studies, which collaborates with agencies across six counties. These are just a sample of these activities across the campus. There are so many others, which really talks about how important is research at PSU. And I'm proud of what our faculty and our students have been able to achieve and are doing. Now, as we are moving forward, our plan is to actually expand on these efforts and try to develop uh, centers of excellence on a number of key areas, and those centers be able to attract major federal funding, as well as state funding, and participation from the uh, private sector, the businesses, as well as our uh, city. I had a pleasure uh, the other day of uh, having a very positive meeting with Mayor Wheeler. And I, at the end of the meeting, we both realized how much we are really in line with what we are thinking moving forward. And uh, it got to the point that uh, we decided that we need to have regular meetings. Uh, and uh, this is to really push forward 
our joint effort in transforming both city of Portland as well as PSU to the heights that really deserve both the city as well as this great institution. You know, one of the points of pride for me about PSU is really the demographic of the students that PSU brings, attracts, and educates. You may know that among all of the uh, public universities in Oregon, and I can say among all of the universities in Oregon, we are the most diverse student body campus. And this is a great point of pride uh, for us. Also, <laughs> truly, also I'm proud the, uh, for the fact that PSU educates more first generation students than any other universities in Oregon. That's another point of pride for all of us. PSU has always served as a gateway to educate and provide opportunities. It was interesting to me that when I went through that infamous bike ride, to see so many bikers come along and say that, did I change something? Or this is automation doing it. <laughs> uh, they talked about that they are an alumni, a graduate of PSU, how proud they are. And what was interesting was the fact that to see so many of them have uh, profound memories about the education they got here at PSU, which says a lot about what my colleagues, the faculty and the staff are doing here to make sure our students have the most positive experience as you go through their education here at PSU. Now, in terms of sustainability, I, uh, as uh, Robert mentioned and as the senator mentioned, we need to collaborate beyond just our own city and our own state. And uh, I know that uh, the uh, Sustainability Institute has really taken uh, in a number of initiatives to get our students to go beyond the borders of uh, US. And I'm really pleased to see that. I, uh, in about uh, three weeks, I will be giving a keynote uh, address at a conference in uh, Hanzhou in China, which is all about sustainability. And of course, what we're gonna do is to make sure that everybody in China knows about how great is PSU and how important sustainability is for PSU. Now, there are a number of other examples of what the PSU and the SSI has done in terms of the, uh, I'm sorry, ISS. Put it the other way around. I thought for a moment I was in England. You know, they go the other, they drive the other side. So. Uh, it was great to see that uh, we had uh, a great deal of opportunities for students in experiential learning. Uh, when you look at the PSU Clean Tech uh, Challenge, and to see that uh, we had Scott, uh, I hope I say your name is Scott right, it's uh, Shayla at ISS secured the initial grant to start the challenge. I want to thank you, Scott. Scott, if you are here in the audience, we want to thank you for that grant. And I learned last week that uh, a group of high school students, these are students from McKay High School in Salem, they won the Clean Tech Challenge that was organized by Oregon Best, and these students were mentored 
by one of our greatest students from the Massey College of Engineering, that's Tyler Hall. And together, they were able, I was impressed. I went and saw their uh, project. It was impressive to see what they have done. And uh, of course, I asked the most important question from them. Guess what was that question? What do you ask from a high school student? Where are you going to go to college? And so far, we have brainwashed two of them. <laughs> I want to make sure that uh, before it's too long, we get all four of them to come to PSU. I want to also thank the uh, Institute for the financial support that they provided not only for our students and faculty, but for the overall community as a whole. These students have been able, through the uh, being a student fellow, to gain experiences on a very large scale of an urban development. They were able to travel to China. Uh, this opportunity came about because uh, Professor uh, Connie Ozawa and her colleagues at Tulan School of Urban Studies and Planning in China teamed up together and provided this opportunity for our students. They have created the PSU China Innovations in Urbanization Program to share their faculty's expertise with government officials and planning staff from China. PSU students have also traveled to Vietnam as part of a high-profile training program for uh, raising the government officials' uh, understanding of sustainability in Vietnam. Uh, this effort also was led by Marcus Engel at the Hatfield School, the Vietnam Oregon Initiative Training Program. This covers sustainable development and conservation. Many universities around the world really are interested to know what PSU is doing, which is a testament to the quality of effort that we, our faculty, and our student and our staff have put into making PSU a role model for sustainability. I'm grateful for all of their effort. But I truly believe that to be successful, it takes more than one or one university. And the uh, Institute for Sustainable Solution is a great example of that through collaborations and partnerships. We have a number of partners and collaborators, and I know Robert showed some of the list of those collaborators. I want to take the opportunity to express my special thank to those that have co-invested in this uh, institute. Uh, the city of Portland, of course, TriMet, Portland Streetcar, Nike, and businesses that have built student housing and are tenants in the buildings that we either own or co-own. It is these partnerships that make the effort really successful. I truly believe in when we say one plus one is more than two. That happens through the partnership. So with that, again, I want to thank you all for your participation. I want to thank the leadership of the Institute. And of course, I want to thank the support from the uh, Miller Foundation for making all of this happen. So it's a pleasure to be with you and look forward to seeing a lot more innovation coming out of this institute. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at this event, which we call Sustainability in Action because we ask all of you to take action in one way or another, take advantage of the opportunities presented to you at PSU. Together, I think we can make a big difference in creating a region, a city, and a world that is more just, livable, lovable, and sustainable. Thank you.